I will request all the members present in the hall to kindly sit down. Thank you. A very warm welcome to one and all present here. I am delighted to be hosting you all on this momentous occasion when Meghalaya TMC makes another strike towards ushering holistic development in this glorious hill state. First and foremost, it is my incredible honor to welcome our National General Secretary, Sri Abhishek Banji, the ITC Parliamentary Party Leader of Raja Sabha, Sri Derek O'Brien, our State in Charge, Dr. Manas Ranjan Gunia, State President, Sri Charles Pungro, and Legislature Party Leader and Leader of Opposition, Dr. Mukul Sangma. I am proud to welcome our 28 candidates from Khasi and Jante Hills present here who through their sincerity and dedication are committed to serving the people. I thank all our esteemed dignitaries for making time to attend this event today, the members of the media and the audience for gracing us with their presence. As we gather here for a very special occasion, we are overjoyed and proud of Meghalaya TMC's journey in the span of one year. The party has achieved great heights and has established itself as a credible political force in the state of Meghalaya. We have expanded our presence in all three hills and our connect with the people of Meghalaya is ever increasing. Meghalaya TMC is set out on a mission to empower the people, uphold the ethnic culture and traditions and celebrate the sacred land. It is a pleasure to have you all amongst us today to celebrate our remarkable journey, paving the way, the way forward with TMC. Without further ado, I would now like to welcome our leaders to do the honors and present to the people of Meghalaya TMC's election manifesto and TMC's 10 pledges for Meghalaya. TMC's 10 pledges for Meghalaya highlights our vision and way forward in bringing peace, progress and prosperity to the state. We present to you a visual compilation of it encompassing people's aspirations, hopes and dreams. Our serene hill state is a land of endless possibilities with an extraordinary potential for growth. Meghalaya, with its rich legacy, can reach the pinnacle of success and to ensure the welfare of the state and its people, Meghalaya DMC promises to bring a transformational change. Presenting DMC's 10 pledges for Meghalaya with a vision to bring peace, progress, and prosperity to the glorious hill state. DMC's first pledge for Meghalaya, abundant opportunities, thriving economy. Meghalaya DMC envisions double-digit economic growth and doubling the state's GDP over the next five years, ensuring a poverty-free Meghalaya. One of the initiatives is establishing 4,000 new MSMEs every year, increasing the total number of operational MSMEs to 1.3 lakh over the next five years. Mining, which is a livelihood for many in Meghalaya, will now be restarted by implementing a 
scientific and sustainable mining policy to ensure that no one's employment is affected. TMC's second pledge for Meghalaya, guarantee of a brighter future. Meghalaya Youth Empowerment, MYE scheme, guarantees to create three light jobs across the state, benefiting the youth of Meghalaya. In addition, an allowance of rupees 1,000 monthly, rupees 12,000 yearly, will be provided to all the unemployed youth between the ages of 21 and 40. In times of pandemic and technological advancements, Education should not be compromised. Hence, TMC will provide 1 lakh laptops to all higher secondary and college students to support digital education. Individuals engaged in Meghalaya tourism will have their employment formalized with a government job card along with a monthly honorarium of rupees 2,500. TMC's third pledge for Meghalaya, Empowered Women, Prosperous Meghalaya. The Meghalaya Financial Inclusion for Women Empowerment, MFI WE scheme, will provide a direct transfer of rupees 1,000 monthly, that is 12,000 yearly, as a guaranteed universal income support to a woman of every household of Meghalaya. TMC's fourth pledge for Meghalaya, Social Security for All. First, Meghalaya TMC will increase all the social welfare pensions to rupees 1,000 monthly, rupees 12,000 yearly. This will provide a huge support to all the persons with disabilities, single mothers, widows and senior citizens, especially in the times of rising inflation. Further, Meghalaya TMC will also introduce Meghalaya Unorganized Sector Training and Empowerment Scheme, Meghalaya Unite to provide skill training and other social security benefits to all the workers of the unorganized sector. Under the Meghalaya Building and Construction Workers Welfare Board, grants for healthcare, education assistance and other benefits will be increased by 25% and the public distribution system will be upgraded with e-ration cards to ensure every eligible person receives the essential food items. DMC's fifth pledge for Meghalaya, better produce, happy farmers. Meghalaya's lifeline, Meghalaya's agriculture, the largest sector of the state, will flourish once again when the Meghalaya DMC implements the new farmers' assistant for rural Meghalaya farm scheme. Under this, all the farmers will receive rupees 10,000 as an annual financial assistant. Also, farm centers will be established as a one-stop assistant in each district for farmers. These centers will ensure support to farmers from production till sales. Also, a premium-free farm crop insurance policy will cover all crops, including those in horticulture, to ensure zero crop loss. TMC's sixth pledge for Meghalaya, holistic health care for all. The essential public health care of Meghalaya will be upgraded from primary to tertiary maternal and child care centers to be set up at every block along with upgradation of PHCs and CACs with all the necessary equipment and needful staff to make them 100% functional. New medical colleges will also be established for public and medical aspirants along with ensuring quality tertiary healthcare facilities across the state to aid the elderly and cover all their healthcare expenses. Coverage under the Meghalaya Health Insurance Scheme will be increased by 25% for senior citizens. Medical shops will be set up in each block with a 20% subsidy. DMC's seventh pledge for Meghalaya, quality education for children. Meghalaya TMC guarantees quality education for the advancement of Meghalaya's future generations. Meghalaya TMC will provide a direct benefit transfer of Rs 1,200 to all the families of school-going children in government-run schools every year to help with the expense of books and other study supplies. Every block will have a model school with all of the basic and necessary infrastructure along with doubling the numbers of seats for teacher training for quality education. TMC's 8th pledge for Meghalaya, robust 
civic infrastructure for residents. Madhali TMC guarantees access to pipe drinking water connections to all households. Meghalaya TMC envisions to illuminate the state by revamping the Meghalaya Energy Corporation Limited to create the necessary infrastructure that will ensure uninterrupted power supply to all. For seamless development of the state and connectivity of roads, Meghalaya TMC will build all-weather motorable roads and to reduce traffic congestion, the Shillong Ring Road project which connects the eastern and western bypasses will be accelerated. TMC's ninth pledge for Mikhalia. Mikhalia's glory, music, sports, culture and tourism. Mikhalia is known for its music, sports and cultural heritage. Mikhalia TMC will launch a number of platforms to promote such talents. First, through mission sports, Grassroot level sports enthusiasts will be identified, trained and promoted at each block and then each district will also have a state-of-the-art multi-purpose stadium. Further, the state's first sports university will be established to facilitate the sports trainees preparation for national and international tournaments. And to promote the state's distinct and rich culture, Mikhalia TMC will establish the Mikhalia Music Promotion Board to train local artists and promote the music on a global scale. Mikhalia TMC will also establish a cultural tourism circuit and grant interest-free loans to local communities to start up homestays and other sustainable tourism businesses since tourism is another thriving industry in the state. TMC's 10th pledge for Meghalaya honor to traditional institutions and sacred land to protect and preserve the hill state's ethnic traditions. The Meghalaya TMC will take all necessary efforts to safeguard and conserve their traditional institutions and sacred land. In order to do this, a comprehensive village administration bill will be prepared in consultation with the autonomous district councils, ADCs and the traditional headmen. The Meghalaya Residence Safety and Security Act of 2016, MRSSA, will be brought into immediate effect across the state, ensuring a comprehensive registration of all legal tenants. Proud of the Hill State's indigenous languages, Meghalaya TMC will strive for the recognition and inclusion of Khasi and Garo languages in the age schedule of the Constitution. Finally, to safeguard the land of the people of Meghalaya, the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the governments of Assam and Meghalaya will be revoked and police check posts will be set up to ensure intensified and timely patrolling at crucial border locations. This launch strengthens our commitment to, to honestly serve our people and ensure all-round welfare. I now request our State President, Mr. Charles Pungu, to kindly address the cabinet. At the outset, it gives us immense honor to welcome our National General Secretary, Sri Abhishek Banerjee, the AITC Parliamentary Party Leader, Mr. Derek O'Brien, the State in Charge, Dr. Manas Ranjan Bonia, the Legislature Party Leader and Leader of Opposition, Dr. Mughal Sangma, and all my respected colleagues and party workers. I am overjoyed to be addressing you all today on this special occasion. Meghalaya TMC has reached a juncture where, where we have seen as the only credible party which can take Meghalaya on the path of progress. And we couldn't have achieved this milestone without the love and support of the people of Meghalaya. Today marks a special occasion when we launch TMC's 
election manifesto and TMC's ten pledges for Meghalaya to bring peace, progress and prosperity to the state. The past year proved to be extremely fulfilling and fruitful for us. Our strength has increased manifold as more and more people of Meghalaya are showing support for our progressive vision. The massive support for our party and honorable leaders was seen at Mendipathar, where 50,000 plus people joined us. The ever-growing belief of the people in our honest work is a testament to our commitment towards <coughs> Meghalaya's progress. I, on behalf of Meghalaya TMC, would like to extend a gratitude for the overwhelming response our two revolutionary schemes, the Meghalaya Financial Inclusion for Women Empowerment, the WE scheme, and the Meghalaya Youth Empowerment Scheme have received so far. Over 3.5 black households of Meghalaya have already shown their support to our endeavor to uplift the women of the state and make them financially independent. I am also overwhelmed that two black youth have put their faith in us and have registered for the MYE card. We are now a month away from the elections and we seek your mandate to help us usher in a holistic development to the state in all sectors covering people from all walks of life. People of our hill state want a change and Meghalaya TMC shall be the torchbearer for a transformational change in Meghalaya. TMC's 10 pledges for Meghalaya are our solemn duties that we will fulfill in mission mode to bring the best governance to you. TMC's election manifesto highlight, highlights our vision and way forward in turning Meghalaya into a model state for us all. Today, let's recommit to fight against all odds and bring back the lost glory of our state. The future of Meghalaya is in our hands and together we will strive towards bringing in better days for our people. Vote for the twin flower symbol to ensure that our collective dream of a prosperous Meghalaya becomes a reality. Once elected, our candidates as true representatives of the people will ensure that the welfare-oriented schemes reach all of you. Thank you, Kublai Mithila. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. We are grateful to have a dedicated leader such as you to serve the people of our beloved state. Now, I would like to invite our legislature party leader and leader of opposition, Dr. Mukul Sangma, to kindly address the gathering. Please accept my heartiest greetings. Our distinguished and beloved uh, National General Secretary, the dynamic and youth icon that uh, the Eastern part of the country has produced, Sri Abhishek Panarji Ji, the TMC Parliamentary Party leader of the Rajasthaba, our distinguished friend, Sri Derek Aubrey Ji, our distinguished state in charge, Dr. Manasji, and my comrade and colleague, the President Meghalaya TMC, Mr. Charles Mangrochi, the Vice President Meghalaya TMC, Mr. George Lingdo. My other comrades who have always been together, inseparable friend, the Vice President, 
by James Lingdo. The glue behind all of us. And all my other distinguished colleagues of rather distinguished party functionaries who have gathered here. And most importantly, all the candidates who have been officially declared by the party, who have shown their collective resolve to be part of this team in ensuring that our collective resolve bring the change that everybody is uh, aspiring for. Ladies and gentlemen, and my distinguished friends from media. It's a wonderful opportunity for me to be part of this very important milestone that the party, Megala TMC, has achieved. To be able to make a promise for the people. And this very moment that we witness today is only because the people have recognized, acknowledged TMC as the only alternative, the only alternative political party to be able to respond to the needs of the people of this beautiful state to be able to fulfill the aspirations of the people to enable our people particularly the youth realize their dreams to the potentialities that they have the recent months as we start this new journey has been arduous and challenging. But the faith and confidence of the people from across the state create a, created a visible change within a short span of time. We also, people from all walks of life, from all corners of the state, gravitating towards this political party. There is only one reason. The reason is that we share the same collective resolve to see a change. As we, in the beginning of our humble endeavor to reach out to the people, engage in this appeal that if you want to change, be the change yourself. And that's why people respond. There's a thirst. There's a hunger for a change. This hunger and thirst for this change is because all the people across the sea understand, understand as to how we are all equally responsible to determine the destiny of our state and not allow the destiny of our state to be in the hands of the bunch of other self-centric anti-people politicians. It's because of this collective resolve to fulfill their these dreams of bringing a change that people from all across the state have shown their desire, the trust and confidence upon this party, our Magala TMC. I would like to thank all our friends who have, despite challenges, despite difficulties and constraints, come together and agreed to build this team, agreed to build this party. All the foot soldiers in different difficult, remotest parts of the states have come together. We are witnessing it every time we have a program. The recent program in Mendipata, where we had to request people that 
only the friends from around the designated venue should come because our Mamata Didi, our national chairperson, shall have summer program in other parts of the state. It was very difficult for us rather to really convince our people to wait and be part of this program, uh, to be part of the other programs. And we saw people from all around. As a political party, when we organize such uh, political rallies, we do give targets. Everywhere, they overshoot the target. As we con uh, completed the program when I was coming out, I had the privilege to meet some of the villagers coming from some of the remotest part of North Garo Hills and East Garo Hills. And when I uh, talked to a group of people from one village, which is one of the smallest villages where there are hardly 48 households. I asked them, how many of you came? So 35 out of 48 households from a small, remotest part of the city, from across the sun. So this is the kind of enthusiasm that the people have to participate in our collective call for bringing a change to the city. Today, the team the TMC Meghalaya stands with firm commitment to ensure that we are able to respond to the dreams and aspirations of the people and formulate programs and policies in sync with the dreams and aspirations of the people. The manifesto and these 10 important pledges that we have met today before the people for all of you is based on based on the inputs the issues the challenges revolving around lives of people across all sectors we had an exhaustive due diligence pertaining to those inputs that we collected in course of our outreach to the people the people who are in some of the most difficult areas. I am thankful to many of our friends who have helped us to reach out to those people. We have spent the days, the hours in the preceding months reaching out to people to understand about the conditions of their living and the issues that confront them and the unfulfilled dreams of the people, how we can attend to them and respond to our call of duty in sync with the desires of the people, need of the people. And today this manifesto is just the outcome of that exhaustive exercise. Nothing imaginative, but completely realistic. And these promises that we have met is based on our exhaustive due diligence of issues and to address those issues. To work on modalities, to fulfill the dreams and aspirations of our beloved people. And as we all say, yes, in democracy, every political party, as we reach out to people seeking mandate during election, we must all be clear in our strategy, in our agenda, in our expected programs and policies, to address all concerns of the people of the state for overall welfare of the people, growth and prosperity of the state. And when we make promises, the spirit of democracy demands that we fulfill those promises once we get mended. Therefore, these promises that we have made is bound to be the promises that we will be implementing without doubt. So to all our friends and comrades belonging to other political parties who doubt our 
sincerity and commitment and competence and capacity to implement them, I will tell them to join us. We will show them how we implement these programs, how we implement these promises, how we fulfill these promises. I have reasons to believe that all our friends belonging to other political party must have been taken by surprise as to how we are going to, you know, how we have been able to rather capture the needs of the people and to project the programs befitting to the aspirations of our people. So with all the support that the people have, the trust and confidence gives us the inspiration and motivation. These whole promises that's reflected in the manifesto, which will be available for the people across the state. They have their own sanctity, all these promises of their sanctity. And with this in mind, we have met this pledge together. And we have also been inspired by how our national chairperson and the Honorable Chief Minister of West Bengal, our beloved Mamata Didi, have remained firm in implementing whatever she has promised. This is the brand, this is the brand of the leader. This is the brand of the party. So this TMC Meghalaya will from now on be known, be it known as a party which will build its brand based on the result to fulfill and keep the promises. I look forward for all the support from everyone. I appeal to all those friends who forms part and parcel of other political parties. Because the, there's one thing that we all know, that every individual who had decided to be part of a political system decided to be a member of any political party, have a reason. The reason being to be able to be part of a team to serve the people and serve the state, protect the interests of the people, and show that every policy and decision that their political party takes is for the larger good of the people and larger good of the state as a whole. But having seen what has happened in the last five years, it's time for all those friends who are member of all those political parties who form the present dispensation of the ruling conglomerate to decide. Lead those parties and be part of our team, Meghalaya TMC. We welcome them. Those who think that they can insulate themselves from those people who engage themselves and who are busy in such centric agendas. Who have deviated completely from the priority which revolves around the larger interests of the people and larger interests of the state. It's very painful for us, particularly for people who have been part and parcel of this uh, journey of building this beautiful state. With such a long innings in public life, to see the state that we have been able to build and position it thus far has been systematically dismantled by this present dispensation. Dislocating the whole momentum of growth and development. Bringing pain and agony amongst people belonging to all walks of life. Be it the teachers, be it the government employees, be it those most vulnerable group of people, People with disabilities, the single mothers, the old, infirm, everybody has been victim of this government's anti-people attitude and their self-centric priorities that they have engaged themselves for during the last five years. The state has been robbed of its 
momentum of growth and development. The overall momentum of growth and development that the state has witnessed in the preceding years prior to the formation of this government has been completely dislocated. The name and fame of the state of Meghalaya has been completely defaced. I am very pained. It's very painful to see the state which we have all built together. To see the state becoming a victim of the greed of the people who are in the hand of affairs of governance. It's time therefore to rescue our state, our people. Free our people and the state from this present dispensation. That's the reason why we are making this clear call to all the people who belong to other political parties to look at the reality and having understood the reality and their true colors, time to disassociate themselves from those parties and be part of this great family, the Meghalaya TMC. I see this TMC as the Parivar which will be able to act as a force of gravity across the region, across the nation in the years to come. We are just making the beginning. The story in the northeastern parts and states start from this beautiful state of ours. After this 2023 election, as we form the government with the mandate of the people, for which we have no doubt, we will carry forward this agenda of serving our people with utmost sense of sincerity, honesty, and integrity. We will build this state with the blessings of our people. And we will live up to the expectations of all our brethren. I once again want to thank all our friends who have been our strength, particularly the workforce, the foot soldiers who are continuously working. And I also wish all my friends, the candidates of the party, I wish you all well, collectively, along with all our uh, workforce who are behind us. We will go through this electoral battle and we'll see that we overcome the challenges. Challenges notwithstanding. We know what challenges we are talking about, but those challenges notwithstanding, we, having seen the trust, confidence, and love of the people, have reasons to believe, beyond any reasonable doubt, that we will have the mandate, the love and support of the people, and will take the whole responsibility with the mandate of the people to take for the state and put it at the highest pedestal. Thank you, friends. And I once again thank our National General Secretary for gracing this occasion. They have been my guide and inspiration, and they continue to be with us. And as a team, TMC is going to be the only political party, whenever we talk of a political party, which will protect the personal liberty and the inclusive character of this great nation. And this is the most important component. Uh, more than anything else, I think people have to understand in this great nation that the strength that we draw from the huge diversity that this great nation has and therefore protecting the personal liberty and the true color of this inclusive character of our great nation shall remain our responsibility and will remain our promise for the people of this state, of this region, and the nation as a whole. Thank you once again. Kule Matela Jai. Thank you so much, sir. Your words of leadership and vision will truly lead the state to wonders. Now, gracing us on this very special occasion is our National General Secretary, Sri Abhishek Banerjee Ji. He has always voiced the concerns of the people and has stood tall against any divisive and discriminatory forces. I now request 
our Honorable General Secretary to kindly address the gap. Thank you, everyone. At the outset, let me wish you all a very happy new year. Greetings to everyone. And thank you for making it in today's press conference. I am uh, extremely happy to have with us today, starting from the state in charge, Dr. Manaswaran Bhuya, Mr. Charles Pingrove, the state president of Meghalaya Trinamool Congress, Meghalaya TMC, leader of the opposition and leader of Trinamool's legislative party in the state assembly, former chief minister, Dr. Mukul Sangma, vice president of state Trinamool Congress committee, Charles, George, Ling, George Lindo and by Charles Lindo, James Lindo, friends in the media, our Rajya Sabha member and leader of the party in Rajya Sabha, Mr. Derek O'Brien. Well, as we present today's manifesto, and you have seen the small clip that we played before revealing the manifesto, it's just not a mere document or a vision document or a book with 10 random promises. First of all, let me point this out at the outset that these are pledges, not promises. When a political party makes a promise, we all know what, how they are and whether those promises are being delivered and honored at a time when they form the government. When we make a pledge, we make a pledge to ensure that in the last drop of our blood, we fight to ensure that they are being implemented to the last person we have promised this pledge to. So let me first take you all through the 10 pledges for peace, 10 pledges for prosperity, 10, pages, 10 pledges for Meghalaya's progress, and 10 pledges for Meghalaya's pride. What is Meghalaya TMC's vision for Meghalaya? Our mission in Meghalaya, as I've always said, is to turn this state, beautiful state into a model state across all sectors. The healthcare and education system will be revamped, the economy will be boosted for growth. The civic infrastructure will be made available for all. Indigenous rights will be protected at all costs. And no decisions will be anti-people or taken without their consent. This document that we present before you today, this has aspiration of lakhs of megalithics. This document, as I said, is not just a mere document. It is a vision document to show the world what Meghalaya is capable of. And it has been prepared by the grassroots expertise of our workers, colleagues, leaders, and through an extensive consultation with the people across from all walks of life, be it experts, students, activists, grassroots leaders, civil society organizations, community representatives, entrepreneurs, men, women, young boys and girls. When Trinamool first stepped into Meghalaya, a lot of people labeled us as outsiders. TMC is an outside party. It's an outsider party. It knows nothing about Meghalaya. It's with immense pride and it fills my heart with great joy to present before you a manifesto with 10 pledges which has been construed with extensive deliberation as I said with all people of people across all walks of life. And Srinamul Congress is the only party in the Meghalaya, especially in the state's political fray, 
to present its manifesto after the elections are announced. And the irony is, a party and the people who labeled us as outsiders are yet to come up with their manifestos and yet to come up with their vision document because they neither have the vision for Meghalaya, neither they have a mission for Meghalaya. So be it any other political party, it can be NPP, I'm not naming any one of them. I'm leaving it to your judgment and wisdom to decide which party, is our, which party am I referring to. A party which labeled Trinamool as an outsider comes up four days after the elections are announced with extensive deliberation and consultation with people across all walks of life with 10 pledges. And what are those 10 pledges? Let me talk you through those 10 pledges. You already have seen in the video. Like you said, our first pledge after Meghalaya TMC forms the government, our first pledge to the people of Meghalaya is abundant opportunities and thriving economy. Under abundant opportunity and thriving economy, we will ensure that double digit economic growth in the next five years to double the GDP size and ensure a poverty free Meghalaya. Then, 4,000 new MSMEs to be added every year, which is four times the current annual growth. To increase the number of functional MSMEs to 1.3 lakh units in the next five years. Then we will ensure that mining is resumed by formulating a scientific and sustainable mining policy to ensure no individual's livelihood is endangered. The policy would revive Meghalaya's Mineral Development Corporation and give it monitoring authority to ensure that only legal mines are operative in the state. Our next pledge is guarantee of a brighter future. Now when we talk of a brighter future, the first thing that comes to our mind is employment, jobs, opportunities. So the first aspect of guarantee of a brighter, brighter future is we place to offer and make opportunities for 3 lakh jobs over the period of next 5 years to be created and an allowance of 1000 rupees monthly which means 12,000 rupees annually to every unemployed youth between the age of 21 to 40 under the Meghalaya Youth Empowerment Scheme. The second is 1 lakh laptops to all higher secondary and college going students in the state to facilitate digital education. We have been hearing about digital India, we have been hearing about double engine model, but we are the only party who walks the talk. You see what the promises or the pledges that Trinamool Congress made before Bengal elections and within three months, all those 10 pledges, all those 10 pledges and commitment that were made before the people of that state have been fulfilled. So if we are making a place before you, we will ensure that every place is being executed and honored within 100 days of forming the government. This is my word to everyone, especially to every brother and sister of the state. We don't make empty, empty promises. And a lot of people, a lot of friends in the media might have this question in their mind that Trinamool is making this big pledges, commitment, promises, where will the money come from? All this have, all this already has been factored in. If you ask me how much money do we need to ensure that all these women who have registered and showed their unwavering faith and support in WECAR, where will the state get this money from? Where will the exchequer get this money from? The state has the money but the government doesn't have the intention to spend. This is the problem. This is the difference we want to bring in and the, and the impact we want to create. We are not giving you... This is not a gift that the government is giving you. This is your right. And we are here to fight for your right to ensure that you get what you deserve. 
If all the women, from, if if every woman from a single household is honored and given one thousand rupees and is empowered by giving twelve thousand rupees annually, we are done not doing a favor. It will not cost the exchequer lakhs of crores. It will only cost the exchequer seven fifty crores. That is not even three percent of the budgetary allocation. So everything has been factored under guarantee for brighter future. we also will engage and identify every individual especially in the tourism sector and their services to be formalized through government registered job cards providing a monthly honorarium of 2500 now you may might ask if everyone is given an honor honorarium of 2500 where will this money come from to boost the tourism industry all individual or individuals engaged in the sector we will identify them and provide them with a monthly honorarium of 2500 this will create an additional financial burden to the government to the tune of 75 crores annually 75 crores that is why i said the last 5 years the government who has been running the state and boasting and bragging about the double engine model is the most inefficient incompetent inept government the country has ever seen our next pledge is empowered women prosperous meghalaya like i said within 100 days after forming the government meghalaya tmc government will ensure that a direct transfer of 1000 rupees monthly and 12000 rupees yearly to a woman of every household as guaranteed universal income support under the mfi for the women empowerment scheme next our next stage is social security now under social security for all we have four important points to make before all of you number 1 all social welfare pensions and schemes will be increased to the tune of 1000 rupees per month the present government and the pension that they have been allocating or giving to a certain amount certain section of the people in the society not everyone it's not universal it is to the tune of 500 550 650 rupees a month but keeping the skyrocketing fuel prices and the rising inflation in mind we have taken a decision that all social welfare schemes to be increased at 1000 rupees a month and 12000 rupees annually doubling the financial assistance to whether it's the pwd or the single mothers widows or the senior citizens and the second point i'm trying to make under the social security for all is a social security scheme which will go by the name of meghalaya unite now what does meghalaya unite stands for Meghalaya Unite is Meghalaya Unorganized Sector Training and Empowerment Scheme for all the 2 lakh 80000 unorganized sector workers to provide them with skill training to provide them free healthcare to give them term life insurance and also provident fund benefits now the financial burden that will cost that will be on the exchequer to implement the scheme will only be 168 crores per annum which is not even 2% of the annual budget 25% increase in grants for healthcare education assistance death benefit marriage assistance and disability pension to workers under the meghalaya building and construction workers welfare board and also e ration cards for all and resurvey in the districts to increase the number of beneficiaries covered ensuring every deserving household receives the pds benefits our next place is better produce and happy farmers under better produce and happy farmers a 10000 rupees annual financial assistance to all farmers in the state through the introduction of the new scheme which will go by the name of farm f a r m and what does farm stands for farmers assistance for rural meghalaya under this scheme i again reiterate a financial assistance of 10000 annually will be extended to 2 lakh 10000 farmers registered in the state irrespective of their land holding 
the total budget proposed for this scheme if all the farmers of this state avail it will stand at 85 crore rupees only farm centers in all districts of the state for one stop assistance to the farmers from productions to sales farm crop insurance policies covering all crops including horticulture crops to ensure zero loss to the farmers our next pledge is holistic health care for all now under holistic health care for all we will ensure that maternal and child care centers in every block to provide efficient prenatal and postnatal services shortage of specialist staff and equipments to be bridged at all phcs and chcs in the state to make them at least 100% functional in the days to come currently you know that there are only 28 chcs against the requirement of 41 chcs the phcs and chcs will be strengthened and made 100% functional to improve the delivery of healthcare services as the gra at the grassroots we will ensure establishment of new medical colleges and ensuring quality territory healthcare facilities across the state 25% increase in healthcare cover for senior citizens under Meghalaya health insurance scheme 60 medical shops one in each block to be set up to provide medicines at 20% subsidy we have done this in West Bengal and West Bengal is the only state to do this so if you are able to do this in Bengal we will do this in Meghalaya too then comes quality education for children a direct benefit transfer of 1200 rupees annually 1200 rupees annually to the families of all school going children registered in government run schools to cover the cost of books stationeries and other study materials each block to have a model school immediate upgradation of school infrastructure in all districts doubling the number of seats for teacher training in the state now next place an extremely important one is robust civic amenities for residents when we talk about civic amenities the first thing that comes to our mind are roads drinking water infrastructure so the first commitment that we make under the robust civic amenities for residents page is we will ensure there is a facilitation of pipe drinking water connections to every household with a target of 100 percent households having piped water connections additional three lakh household in the state will have piped water facilities the second is revival and overall of MECL to create resilient infrastructure for uninterrupted power supply to every household the next is all 6459 villages across the state of Meghalaya will be connected with black topped motorable roads and upgradation of major arterial roads to all weather roads this is extremely important I reiterate that under civic amenities for residents we will ensure that all 6459 villages in Meghalaya to be connected with black top motorable roads and also upgradation of major arterial roads to all weather roads the entire 20,993 kilometer stretch of unsurfaced rural roads will be converted into black top motorable roads to provide all weather connectivity and also as shown in the video we will take up the Shillong Ring Road project in mission mode which connects the eastern and western bypass to be completed as soon as possible to ease the persistent traffic snarls, traffic snarls in the city to enhance regional connectivity and decongest traffic in parts of Shillong this project will be completed at the earliest without any human or environmental costs our next pledge is Meghalaya's glory music sports culture and tourism mission sports to identify train and promote talent at the block level each district will have a state-of-the-art multi-purpose stadium 
all 12 districts will have in the next five years these stadiums and we will try to target two, three districts on yearly basis ensuring that all 12 districts are covered and every district has a state-of-the-art stadium in the next five years. State's first sports university will be set up with, a, with an additional and corpus fund of corpus of 10 crores to assist the 22 registered state sports association and recognized sports club under them. Meghalaya Music Promotion Board will be started and we will set up the state's musicians through training and assistance with a vision of taking the local music to the global stage. Establishment of a cultural tourism circuit through identification and promotion of cultural and ecological hotspots in every district, interest-free loans, off to up, interest-free loans up to the tune of 2 lakhs to local communities to set up homestays and conduct the sustainable tourism activities and this will only be done at a mere cost of 1 crore annually. This is nothing. So establishment of a cultural tourism circuit through identification promotion of a culture, cultural and ecological hotspots in every district to boost the tourism industry. Our next place is honor to traditional institutions and sacred land. A holistic village administration bill in consultation with the ADCs and traditional headmen to uphold and protect the traditional institutions to be introduced. Effective and immediate implementation of Meghalaya Residents Safety and Security Act 2016 across the state to ensure a comprehensive registry of all legal tenants. Private member bill in the union government, we have already, in the union parliament, we have already taken this up. Legislators from this very state went, protested, made it a point to flag this with the union government. Our parliamentarians, both within and outside the house, have raised this several times. But we want to assure you that a private, private member bill in the union parliament for immediate recognition immediate recognition of Khasi and Garo languages through their inclusion in the 8th schedule of the constitutions will be ensured. The border MOU, last but not the least, the border MOU signed with the government of Assam will be revoked as and when Meghalaya TMC forms the government and police check posts at all strategic border areas to be set up to address this issue of unwarranted surrender of land to Assam and protect the residents in border villages and border MOU signed with the government of Assam will be revoked. So these are the 10 pledges that we make before you and we want to assure you that all these 10 pledges will be honored as and when TMC forms the government on the 2nd of March when the results come out and the state is re ready to welcome a change with open arms. I would like my friends, if I would ask my friends in the media, if you have any questions to ask, I will be happy to answer them. But please ask them one by one and before asking them, please introduce yourself. Yes, one by one please. Excuse me. But do you, do you really need to keep your boobs here because I'm using this? No, it is blasting. It is blasting here. Oh, I see. Okay.
Papita. Papita. Yeah, I have I have this uh, question. Your manifesto, in your manifesto, you have mentioned about implementation of the MRSSA. But why is your manifesto silent on the inner line permit, which is uh, a long pending uh, demand of uh, the people of the state of Bihar? I've answered this question before. That it's an extremely sensitive issue, and uh, we will take all the stakeholders, their feedback, their suggestion into consideration. We will have a deliberate consultation with each and every resident of the state, everyone, and then come to a conclusion and do what is in best interest of the people of the state. Sorry, sir, can't see you. Uh, there, there is a Hi. observation by the CM Kundar Sangma that this your uh, soaps and freebies will bring additional debt burden to the state. What is your response? As I clearly stated, that you, if you want to implement these 10 pledges, you will not incur an additional debt on the state exchequer. You don't. You only need to have that honest intent to work for the people. And starting from we scheme to my scheme, all these are not even two percent, three percent of the budget. So there will be no additional debt which be which will go and the onus will lie on the state government. You just need correct and honest intentions to do holistic and make sure that you are able to do all round development and work so work for all phases of all works of people across the state. To supplement. Uh, sir, I am apart, I work for the show. Uh, Hi. Yesterday, Conrad Summer has said that most of your leaders will leave the party. Most of the? Most of your leaders. Most of our leaders. Yeah. Okay. Leave TMC, most people are going to be three elections. You just need a commitment. So, with uh, all your respect, with extreme grace and humility, I would uh, thank him for, you know, uh, believing, thank him for. Uh, Believing in market rumors, like he allegedly claimed, it's very unbecoming of a chief minister to believe and listen to what the market agents and the market rumors are. And you hardly found time in the last five years to stand by the people of your state. So if you're only talking bad about the people of the state, you're ending up belittling the people of Meghalaya, you're ending up denigrating the people of this very state, you are ending up trash talking about your own colleagues. That is extremely unbecoming of a chief minister. So I can only tell him to concentrate in his campaign. Now NPP no more is National People's Party. It has become National Puppets Party. It is established. And it is only, only a matter of time when this My Development Alliance government is ousted and a true government which will work towards the all-round development of a state is established. It's only a matter of time. This proves that he is perplexed, he's bewildered, he's scared, and he's rattled. Please, one by one. Hi. Yeah, uh, well, I'm Kulvansha Bhattacharji, and uh, I work for News 18, and uh, also I edit uh, Meghala News 24. So, my question is uh, since uh, it is predicted that no single party is getting majority in the in, uh, next election, so how are you planning to implement your manifesto? Because uh, if no, who's three... predicting? We are not astrologers. We should leave it to the judgment and wisdom of the people of Meghalaya. How can we predict? How can we predict that who is getting what number of seats? You never know. We should leave it. A government has been given chance. They have worked for five years, and the party which was in the opposition has tried to stand by the people. They have, the people of Meghalaya have seen their performance as well. Now every political party in a democracy has got the right and the chance to go to the people of the state and tell them what they did with their report card. Now let it be left to the judgment and understanding and the wisdom of the people to take a call when the result comes out on the 2nd of March. Alright? I hope that answers this question. The MVP, uh, yes. had your V card and my card as Baki card. Your reaction to that? 
I have no reaction. I am I am here, like I said, it's not a promise, it's a pledge. We have done it in West Bengal, we will do it in Meghalaya. We have ensured and you'll be surprised to know. You'll be surprised to know that when we went for polls, when we released the manifesto before the Bengal elections, our honorable chairperson said we are only promising to give to one woman in every household. After coming to power in three months, she has make she has made sure that every woman of the state is covered in that scheme. So it can literally happen in Meghalaya too, you never know. But that's for sure that every household and one woman for every household will get a DBT of 1000 rupees monthly and 12,000 rupees annually. And it will be the first decision that the cabinet will take and it will not even take 100 days. It will be executed in the first two weeks after forming the government, I can assure you. Yes. a party of outsiders as you were referring as well uh, because uh, in Bengal a campaign when uh, TMC had you know tagged BJP as a party of Bohiragathos or outsiders so in the same light in the same breath he thinks that if uh, BJP was a party of Bohiragathos in Bengal then TMC is a party of Bohiragathos in Meghalaya politics this is one this is my first question second question apart from Meghalaya you are also contesting in Tripura while we see in Meghalaya there is a you know sustained build up it is completely missing in Tripura as far as, as uh, we see. Number two, are you open to alliance with regional parties in Tripura? Because one of the uh, prominent regional parties have given an offer to all the national parties uh, of alliance on their terms of a separate state. Sir, I'll only answer your question in context with the Tripura elections when I'm in Tripura. But having said that, we are extremely serious about fighting elections wherever we go. You see Meghalaya, Nagaland and Tripura elections are happening simultaneously at the same time. And we are also leaving no stone unturned wherever, as a general secretary of the party, I can tell you that wherever Trinamool is starting their journey, we are leaving no stone unturned and fighting the election with all our might available at our disposal. Number two, the question you asked that Trinamool has been labeled as an outsider party. You see Mukul Sangma, Charles Pingrop, are the outsiders? I say this on record in front of camera making a proper eye contact with you that Meghalaya will be ruled by Meghalayans. Don't steal your side, sir. Meghalayans will be ruled by Meghalayans. Will BJP have the guts to come in Bengal and say Bengal will be ruled by Bengal? Will BJP have the guts to come to Bengal and say will BJP have the guts? Any, any, any national leader for BJP for that matter will have the guts to come to Meghalaya and say Meghalaya will not be ruled from the Ivory Towers of Delhi or Guwahati. Meghalaya will be ruled from Garo, Khasi and Jayantia. Let BJP come and say, let BJP come and say, I will apologize to every Meghalayans with folded hands. Alright? Sir, please go to princess. Uh, what would you ask, uh, one of your 10 pledges also bans on uh, scientific mining. However, we see that this present government is already working on that and they have also clearly stated that it is these very leaders who are there in the TMC who were there back then in 2014 when the ban was imposed. However, they didn't touch or work on it and now that this government has taken credit uh, for implementing scientific mining. No, so we will formulate a scientific policy making sure that mining is sustainable in the long run and also it doesn't endanger the lives of the people involved in the mining. So once we have made that place, that will be kept. Be rest assured. You're talking about the state government here? Yes. Yes, definitely. If someone who has taken people's aspirations for granted, someone who has taken the mandate for granted and deliberately decided to sit over things and doing nothing, they will be taken to task, all pe perpetrators will be taken to task and brought to book and ensure that Meghala is able to emerge as a model state in the days to come, like I said. Your uh, term as chief minister, we have seen you laying a uh, foundation stone for the Sri 
Law Medical College and as well as Tura Medical College. So what is the reason for these medical colleges in the state not seeing the light of the day? You have uh, probably all the records under your command. This issue has been taken up in the assembly, both inside the house as well as outside the house, by the opposition, by us. Now, what has happened is that post-2018, the government has lost its priority. The whole initiatives, the whole uh, uh, implementation that was uh, initiated, say for example, for the case in, 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 in respect to the medical college Shillong, isn't it a fact that we have started the uh, construction and building of the chest hospital in Maudyamdyam? This is one of the initiatives because the red chest hospital was supposed to be the venue where the host, uh, our uh, Shillong Medical College was supposed to be established. Now what has happened has to be asked. This question has to be directed to the present incumbent government. Then in respect of uh, Dura Medical College, you will well appreciate that the government of India embarked upon on the basis of our request, request from the states, that the states will be supported with financial assistance for establishment of medical college in those districts where there is no medical college. So therefore, Tura was one of the beneficiary districts. But what happened? 172 crores of money has been released, but they have not utilized that money. I think the figure was uh, reflected in their reply in the last session, last SFP session they ended up spending only 62 crores. So what happened to the rest of the money? So this question also should be directed towards the incumbent present government. That's why what we are saying is that we will remain committed to fulfilling those aspirations and dreams of our people. See, medical college is not only for imparting med medical education. It acts as a referral center, the final referral center in our whole referral system of health delivery system. Therefore, today, the people have been compelled to send their loved ones requiring further referral treatment elsewhere, outside the state. So these are issues which are confronting our people and these shouldn't have been there anymore. People would have been benefited not only for sending their children to study or rather uh, under take their medical courses, but also innumerable number of families would have been benefited by the healthcare facility that is provided by medical colleges. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, Prince. Kindly join us for IT once uh, after this program gets over. Thank you so much.